Yamuna Divana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashuda Ras Pua Krishna Yash Rako Vachana Mana Mora Vibha Bari Shesha Loka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Kriva Gaur Premanande Haribo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Om Namo Narayanam Namaskrityam Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraya Tato Jaya Mudiraya Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 5, Narada's instruction on Srimad Bhagavatam, text number 30. Yes? Yes. Hare Krishna. Ami Srimad Bhagavatam, Pohilo Iskanda, Panch Adhyayeku, Tis Luka Pornangat Nandesum, just to see such a Maharaj Muni like for this Srimad Bhagavatam Kubari Vyasdev Dwara. Gyanam Gyuyatamam Yatat, Gyanam Gyuyatamam Yatat. Sakshat Bhagavato Titam Sakshat Bhagavato Titam Anvavochan Gamishyanta Anvavochan Gamishyanta Vipaya Dina Vatsala Vipaya Dina Vatsala Gyanam Gyuyatamam Yatat Gyanam Gyuyatamam Yatat Sakshat Bhagavato Ditam Anvabhochan Gavishyanta Vipaya Dinavatsala Gyanam Gyuyatamam Yatta Sakshat Bhagavato Ditam Anvavochan Gamishyanta Vipaya Dinavatsala 
ज्ञानम भूयतमम यत् ज्ञानम भूयतमम यत् साक्षात् भगवतो दितम् साक्षात् भगवतो दितम् अनुभवोचन गमिष्यंता अनुभवोचन गमिष्यंता रिपया दिनवसला रिपया दिनवसला ज्ञानम भूयतमम यत् ज्ञानम भूयतमम यत् साक्षात् भगवतो दितम् साक्षात्
विकसित होते हुए निगुण ब्रह्मा के ज्ञान तक पहुंच जाता है इसको इसके ऊपर जब जब इसमें कुछ कुछ भक्ति मिल जाता है तो यह परमात्मा का ज्ञान या सर्वव्यापी शिव भगवान का ज्ञान बन जाता है यह अधिक गुण भूय है किंतु यदि यह ज्ञान शुद्ध भक्तिमय सेवा में परिणत हो जाता है और दिव्य ज्ञान का गुह्य अंश प्राप्त हो जाता है तो यह गुह्यतम ज्ञान कहलाता है श्री भगवान ने ब्रह्मा अर्जुन उर्दव इत्यादि उद्धव इत्यादि को यह गुह्यतम ज्ञान प्राप्त प्रदान किया है ओम ज्ञान तिमरंदस्या ज्ञानंजना शलाकाया चक्षुर्मिलस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनो विस्तुम स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूपकदाति स्वापदिक वंदेहम श्रीगुर श्रीयतापदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णव श्रीरूपम सक्रजात सह गनाथम ठम सजीव सद्वैतम सवदूता परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य दीव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पद सह गनाश्री विशाखा नितम हे कृष्ण कर्ण सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कंठा राधा कंठा नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरंगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणामी हरि प्रिय पंच खौपतुभ्य कृप सिंधु पतिताभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमा विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदाता स्वामी नामने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे घोरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवारी पश्चातारिने जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधा श्रीवासदे गौरवातविंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वेर हियरिंग नरद मुनि डिस्क्राइब about how in his previous life he had the opportunity to associate with bhakti vedantas he was just a young boy but the bhakti vedanta sadhus had come to the home of his mother and he had the opportunity to render service to them and it's described how he was a very good boy he was not naughty he was he was not playing sports and he was very attractive to the bhakti vedantas he had great faith in them and when it came time for them to leave they took the opportunity to give him instructions and bhakti vedantiyaru pani wala ekdam prem garnu hunthyo ra tei bhayera wala He had rendered service to them, so they had appreciated the humble service attitude of this boy. Srimad Bhagavatam says, "Mahat sevam dwara mahur vimukte." तमोद्वर योषिथम संगी संगीसंगम 
By serving the Mahatmas, it opens the doors to liberation. This is actually a verse spoken by Prahlad Maharaj. And he is describing, you serve the devotees, it's very good for you, you get a lot of benefit. And at the same time, if you serve the, the objects of the senses, if you serve your mundane material desires, it's very bad for you and it takes you to hell. So Pro, uh, Prahlad Maharaj was describing the benefits of association with devotees and we see here in this example of Narada Muni how although he was just a young boy, he was greatly benefited by the association of saintly people. The saintly devotees carry the Lord in their heart, and wherever they go, they purify the place. Maharaj Yudhisthira was appreciating Vidura when Vidura returned to, to Hastinapur, to their palace. Vidura had gone, he'd been driven out by Duryodhana and he'd gone off to visit the holy places and he traveled in the holy places for many years. And when he came back, then Maharaj Yudhisthira was happy because Vidura is his uncle. So he was so happy that Vidura has come back after so many years. And Yudhisthira Maharaj said, Bhavad Vidir Bhagavatas Tirta Bhuta Swayam Bibo Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani Swanta Stena Gadabrata. Maharaj Yudhisthira is saying that you, you are the personification of the holy places because you carry the Lord in your heart. So wherever you go, you purify that place. So it's the presence of the devotees which make this a holy place. Mm -hmm. We want to keep the sanctity of the holy place, just like in the holy place there's no sinful activities. Mm, you, go, you go to a holy place, you don't go to take drugs, you don't go to have illicit sex, you go to purify yourself. So, Krishna consciousness is to sanctify the whole planet by spreading the Sankirtan movement. <laughs> Maharaj uh, oh, described here in this verse how these Bhaktivedantas give gyan, they give knowledge to Narada in his previous life. <laughs> 
And Prabhupada explains there's different levels of knowledge. There's confidential knowledge, there's more confidential knowledge, and there's the most confidential knowledge. And this is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. We will find confidential knowledge, first of all, given in the, in the uh, beginning of the Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 2 and Chapter 3, Lord Krishna is explaining Atma Tattva, the, the, the science of the soul, that the body is different from the soul. Most people don't know they're not the body. Even though they may be Thai, they may be Buddhist, but they don't know that they're not the body. So somebody understands, somebody actually knows I'm not the body, that is confidential knowledge. But then there's more confidential knowledge. And that is to understand, for example, that the Lord, there's a Supreme Lord and he has potencies, he has energies. That's described in chapter 7 and chapter 8 of the Bhagavad Gita. But then there's the most confidential knowledge, which is chapter 9 in the Bhagavad Gita. And Lord Krishna describes how he has a very intimate connection with his devotees who have taken full shelter of him. Krishna describes Ananyas Chinta Yanto Mam. This is very confidential. Lord Krishna says, for those who have taken shelter of me and who are absorbed in thinking of me, for them I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. We can understand the three different levels of knowledge in another way. We could explain that confidential knowledge is to simply understand Brahman, the impersonal Brahman. We see a lot of people are Mayavadis. It's much easier for people to understand Mayavada philosophy. If you go and see Lom, that temple there, what's it? What's it? What cake? Huh? Yeah. Anyway, well, that temple in Siloam, you see there's so all the deities are there, right? All the devas are all there. And if you ask them which one is God, oh, they're all God. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is the Brahma, Mayavadi, that they understand the impersonal Brahma. Mm -hmm. 
You're also God. You can also become God. And so this is the impersonal understanding. And then higher than that, then there's Paramatmavadi, to understand the super soul in the heart of all living entities. That the Lord is not just only all pervading energy, but He's in the heart of all living entities. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvasya Chaham. Yes, Lord Krishna says, I am in the hearts of all living entities, and from me comes knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. <laughs> so this is more confidential knowledge. But there's the most confidential knowledge, which is to understand Bhagavan, that the Lord Himself is a person separate from everyone. Mm. The Srimad Bhagavatam tells us, Vedanti tat tat vam vidyam tat vam yajnana madvayam brahmati Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth Call this non dual substance Brahman Paramatma Bhagavan. You have to know the philosophy better. Yeah? You know the language, but you don't know the philosophy so well. Okay, so there are three different levels of knowledge, and the highest is to understand Bhagavan. So in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the process of knowledge. Who knows the verse? I will begin it for you. Bahunam Janmanam. <laughs> So, by the process of knowledge, do you make advancement very quickly? Who says yes? Who doesn't know? <laughs> what does Bhagavad Gita say? Bhagavad Gita says, after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge will surrender to me. Samahatma Sudula, such a soul is very rare. So we can understand by the process of knowledge, you don't make advancement very quickly. It, take, it takes a long time. Many births. Do you want to take many births? So, then you have to just surrender to Krishna, right? 
You just have to take up the process of bhakti yoga and very quickly you can go back to Godhead. But if we take the process of knowledge, it's very trouble. It's a lot of, it takes a long time. Klesho Avyakta sakta chaitasam avyakta hi. Lord Krishna is saying, Klesha, trouble. You take this path of knowledge, it is a lot of trouble. But still, you have to have some knowledge. It doesn't mean you shouldn't know anything. You have to know something. Just like Lord Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to the sun god. And then he spoke the same knowledge to Arjuna. And so why did Krishna speak again and again? Because the, and the knowledge was lost. Why was the knowledge lost? Because they changed everything. Krishna says, Yoga Nashta Parantapa. They didn't they didn't follow the process, the disciplic the succession. They deviated. And Lord Krishna had to come again and re-establish the disciplic succession. So he spoke this knowledge to Arjuna, but he, he spoke knowledge to other people as well as Arjuna. And Prabhupada mentions about Uddhava. Lord Krishna also spoke to Uddhava. Before Lord Krishna departed from the world, Lord Krishna gave instructions to Uddhava. Uddhava wanted to go with Krishna. Krishna said, no, you have to stay here. Just like Lord Rama left the world, he didn't take Hanuman with him. He told Hanuman, you have to stay here. Hanuman's there in Kimparusha Loka. You know Kimparusha Loka? Have you been there for a holiday yet? <laughs> it's around Mount Meru, and the people who live there, they're all big monkeys like Hanuman. And so Hanuman's there, but wherever there's Ramkata, Hanuman is allowed to come. Hmm. So, there, there are examples, great devotees, they stay here in this world, they don't go back to Godhead. According to the Lord's instructions, they are obedient to the instructions of the Lord. One devotee was saying to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I just want to stay here in Vrindavan. It's so nice here. I just want, I never want to leave. But Prabhupada said to him, no, you have to go and give Vrindavan to others. You just want to enjoy Vrindavan yourself, that's the enjoying mentality, that's not good. 
You should want to give Vrindavan to others. Hmm, so Lord Krishna says, the one who is teaching that knowledge to others is very dear to Lord Krishna. Nachatasman manusheshu Christian me priyakrita maha. There's no one more dear to me than that person who is distributing that knowledge. So it's not that because we are devotees that we don't have any knowledge. We should have knowledge. We should have some knowledge. Mm, which, oh, who is Krishna? Oh, I don't know. I just chant Krishna's name. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada said, if we think like that, then you won't last very long in Krishna consciousness. So bhakti is at the top of the yoga ladder, so it includes everything below bhakti. It includes all the lower processes, jnan and karma and dhyan, they are all there included in bhakti. The one who is a devotee, he also has, he's also, no, he's also done karma, he's also got jnan and he's also meditating, remembering Krishna. So everything is included there. One who is a real devotee, the real devotee, a real bhakta, he has, he, he is detached from the results of work. That's karma yoga. And he understands, he's got knowledge, he understands about the Lord and his energies. And he's always remembering the Lord also. So this is the real bhakta. That includes all the, all the other levels of yoga. Everything is there in real devotion. So that is the most confidential knowledge. So we want that most confidential knowledge. We can hear that's right there in the heart of the Bhagavad Gita. Right, ninth chapter, and then the last verse of the ninth chapter, that is the most confidential knowledge. Manmana. We have four things Krishna is telling us to do. Use our mind to think of him. Become my devotee. Offer obeisance to me. And worship me. So these four activities are very confidential. This is for the most confidential devotees. They will do these things. So the Bhaktivedantas, they give this knowledge to Narada in his previous life. And by the grace of their knowledge, he was able to become, next life, he became the son of... Who, not, who did he have? Brahma, right? Narada Muni in his next life became the son of Brahma. And he is the great 
devotee. And Brahma also got instruction from Lord Krishna. What instructions did Brahma get from Krishna? Huh? Creation. What? Creation. Uh, well, no, actually, Brahma, he, he got, he got, huh? Yeah, first of all, he was told tapa, to do tapa. Yes, that was there. Hmm. But the Lord spoke the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam to Brahma. The original four verses of Srimad Bhagavatam were spoken by Brahma to well, spoken by Krishna to Brahma. Right? Those four verses are there in the ninth chapter of the second canto. Mm. Brahma heard the original four verses, the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam. And this Bhagavatam we're reading, that's the expansion of those four verses. How many slokas in the Bhagavatam? How many slokas in Bhagavad Gita? How many slokas in Valmiki Ramayana? Valmiki Ramayana, what is slokas? 24,000. How many letters are in the Brahma Gayatri? Brahma Gayatri, what is the answer? 24. So every 1,000 slokas of Valmiki Ramayana begins with the next, ver next uh, syllable from the Brahma Gayatri. Showing that Brahma Gayatri is a meditation on the Lord, so the Ramayana is also that, like that, a meditation on the Lord. Somebody was saying to me, oh, we should read, we should read Tosi Dash Ramayana. And he was saying, yeah, he begins always with uh, um, Ganesh, offering obeisances to Lord Ganesh. And so I told him, I said, we don't worship Ganesh. We are worshipping the Supreme Lord. And the, God, the Gayatri Mantra is the meditation on the Supreme Lord. And Valmiki Ramayana begins like that. He uses the whole Gayatri Mantra as he goes one, every 1,000 verses, a different letter of the Gayatri Mantra. <laughs> 24,000 verses. Okay, any question? Yes, Prima? He is asking that uh, Narad Muni's mother was uh, made and his father also not mentioned. How is he got opportunity to sort those Vedantis in their house? Because of his previous life. Previously, he was a Gandharva and he had been cursed because of some offense. Yeah. Previously, he was a very handsome Gandharva. <laughs> 
and he had a beautiful voice and he was singing and joking in the association of young women. And he began to joke and sing the names of the demigods. And because he was singing these names of the demigods and joking with the young women, the Prajapatis, the seniors there, they cursed him that you're so foolish and proud, you will make you humble, you take birth in the womb of a Sudra woman. This way you become humble. So, because he had some things from previous life. He got the mercy of these Bhaktivedantas. Hmm. Yes, okay. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much. Today's Ekadasi, you should all do more hearing and chanting. And Lokanath Swami should be here this evening to address all of you. So very fortunate, Bangkok is getting a lot of mercy. Last night Vyasaki Prabhu was here and tonight Lokanath Swami. Bangkok, Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam ki Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>